Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Leah and I'm a collage artist. Today, let's talk business. I've been running Flanzella for three years now and I wanted to give my tips on what I would do if I was looking to start my business or just dabbling in the idea of it. This video will be for anyone that is looking for advice or just trying to understand what the art business could look like. Preface, I am not a full-time artist yet. I've been doing this for three years, but every day I do feel closer and closer to that experience and I've learned a lot on the way. When looking for advice and a mentor, you definitely want someone who's done it recently and is one or two steps ahead of you. And that's definitely who I am for you guys if you haven't started a business already or if you're just looking for other advice on what you could do to improve your business at this time. We're gonna start with a story time and then I'm going to give you all my tips on what I would do differently if I was starting a business today. So let's get into it. So I started my art business three years ago, but what was I doing before that? I always loved art. It was something I gravitated to and I didn't just do collage. I did a lot of collage, but I also love to paint and do drawings and all sorts of different things. I like to draw little monsters and I loved painting strangers and there's just a lot of person subject matter, which I see now in my art for sure. I still have a lot of people in my collages. I was always told that art was not a career and although I never really listened to people, I really didn't feel like I had the support or mentorship needed to become an artist. In fact, I was living in a world with no other artists around me, so I just really didn't even know that it did exist as a career and I didn't know where to start. I then freelanced in graphic design for several years and every business I went to, I was meeting all the, these people that were creatives that had side businesses where they were selling their art or craft and I was so intrigued by that. What made you start this? How did you even know to do that? It was just something that I was not exposed to at all. I don't know a single person at this point that had a side business. So I talked to them a lot about how they started their own business and a lot of them got started on Etsy. So I worked my way into that field and decided to say, what would I sell if I had an Etsy shop? And the first couple things I came up with were three stickers and I think five art prints. I worked hard to get that together and try to think of how I was gonna do it. I said I was gonna do it for like almost a year and I just kind of played around with the idea, but it was just hard. Like I didn't know what to sell because at the time, I was working a lot, so I wasn't really making art the way that I am now. I got home from work and would be so exhausted that I wouldn't do anything. And during work, the only thing I could really get away with was drawing in a notebook. So at that time, I was doing a ton of drawing. And so I made one of the stickers a drawing. It's my Strawberry Brit sticker. And at university, I did a lot of digital illustration, so that's where the Frida sticker came from. And then my last one was a painting of Fang and Me, which was one of the first things that I did after I adopted Fang. I started with those three stickers and the whole time I was hoping to make more of the Frida ones. I was hoping to do all of the different artists and be able to sell those. But inspiration never struck me. I talked about it for probably five years to make these stickers and it just never happened. But then I did something good. I got into collage a lot more seriously and made five pieces that I really liked. There was definitely more, but these were the ones that I was like, okay, I could make prints of these. And I had made prints in university for an art gallery for digital illustrations. So I kind of knew some people that were in that industry at least. And in university, I volunteered a lot for graphic design um, for a lot of companies. So uh, I was able to have those skills of like how to print, how to kind of run uh, a business in some way, how to promote yourself. But they were skills that I had just never linked to my art. So fast forward a little bit and we're launching an Etsy shop and everything was going well at the beginning. I was getting like a sale a week, which I thought was great considering I had never sold a single thing of my art and it, it made me feel good. And a lot of my friends were really enjoying the prints that I was making. So I worked really hard at that again. And then obviously COVID happened, I lost my job. And at the time I was working so much, I just really didn't have work-life balance and I was going out a lot with my friends. So this is the first time where my life really stopped. And I know it's when a lot of artists really contemplated making a business. And for me, I had already kind of started it, but this was the real thing that helped me was having so much time. I was unemployed for the entire summer and literally I was just gardening and making art. And it was like the time that I look back at and hopefully one day I can get there again because it was just such a beautiful time. I was so relaxed and I was like, wow, this is what artists used to do in the old times. Wow, well, that's why they made so much art because it was just them and their art and something they loved. 
in August of 2020, I decided to do an art show with one of my roommates who was an artist and we killed it. We rented a space for an entire week and basically sold everything. There's so many people just coming in and enjoying our art and also leaving with an art piece, which is just incredible. And I also had those art prints that I had made and stickers, so I was selling those on the side and that's when I realized how much more money you can make from prints because I was selling the same piece over and over and over again and it really opened my eyes to that. After that, I decided to expand my product line, add more prints and get into markets. At the time too, I was starting my social media, posting my collages and whatever, and it was going pretty well, but it took a lot of work, way more work than I ever could have imagined. I then did some markets. I tried out being in stores. I tried wholesale. I was in galleries for guest shows. I applied to online magazines for featuring my work. I just tried out like a whole bunch of different things for an entire year and a half. And I just wanted to see what was working, what wasn't. The problem was the whole time is that COVID kept blocking a lot of things. So I'd sign up for some sort of art event and then everything would shut down again. So there wasn't really consistency. And although I say three years, I really feel like I've only had maybe a year and a half of like solid time, but it's good because I learned a lot. The best time to plant a tree was 15 years ago, but the second best time is today. So if you're watching this, this is your message to start if that's something you wanna do. I took a course on businesses starting January, 2021, and it really helped me learn a lot of different things. Definitely worth it. I feel like I've really tried everything. I'm definitely not someone who was lucky on their first strike of posting on TikTok or Instagram or any of those things. I've worked really hard in every single way. Um, and now I'm trying YouTube and I'm, I'm loving it and I'm seeing the results I wanted. I tried other social media platforms and I wasn't seeing the return. I have really tried out every social media platform and the same thing was happening where I would have a video go semi-viral, I would show off art prints, products, etc., and I would get zero sales from them. So the people that are like, I sold out, I don't know how they've done that so far, still trying to learn that, but I don't think that we have any control of that. It's just the right people need to see your things. I eventually tried out TikTok in 2020 and honestly, I'm not very good at making movies on there, which is very funny because I love long form video and I love editing it and I thought that it would be like an easy transition. But for me, I just didn't have the ideas that I thought I potentially would on that platform. And I didn't really do that well. I still occasionally use it, but it, yeah, it just never converted the way that I thought it would. So the next step for me was going to large scale art events. So I got into Toronto Outdoor Art Fair, which is huge, and The Artist Project, which are both ones that a lot of people come to and you get a lot of press on. From these events, I had so many online sales of original artworks, Instagram followers that turned into purchasers, and longtime followers. When you're new, exposure really is key. And if you're lucky enough to just pick it up right away and not have to do these events, that's awesome. But I do think that there is a level of exposure that is really good for everyone starting out. And even in your mid career, I would try to do like one or two shows a year. So I feel like I've tried literally everything to get my business off the ground and it's been hard. I've had to work really, really hard and dedicate a lot of hours to it. This is kind of one of those everything happens for a reason in my mind for this situation where I've tried so many different things that I've now started a YouTube channel and I'm able to give people advice on every single situation essentially. And I think that that's why, in my mind at least, why it's taken me so long to figure it out because I have to educate other people and show them the way. I've watched other art business YouTubers, TikTokers, etc., and I feel like they all have gotten famous very quickly off of like one or two platforms. I've done everything. I swear to you, I've tried so, so many different things and I'm still trying so many things. So I think I have a lot of knowledge to give. So this is only the beginning for my art business advice. The first thing I would do is realize what you're committing to and clear times in your schedule every single week where you're gonna work on this because you can't just start one day and then stop doing it. This is something that is a snowball effect and you're going to need to continuously do it for potentially many, many years and you need to be committed. The next thing I would do is go through all of the art that you've done before and scan it in if you haven't or take good photos of it in well-lit spaces, add mock-ups, etc and create a content bank essentially for social media. When starting out, you're gonna get really excited and be posting constantly, but then if there's a little lull in your motivation or something happens, maybe you're going on vacation, you need some posts to fill in those gaps. So I would highly recommend having 
at least like 100 photos in an album that you can just quickly grab and post and not have to worry about before even starting. The next thing I would do is get your domains, handles, and register your business in the name that you're planning to run it under. This is different per country, so definitely go take a look. This is not legal advice by any means, but registering your name is super important at the beginning. And I've registered mine as business name as Flanzella. Before choosing this name, I looked up the domains. I made sure there was no copyright or trademarks under this name. And I found as many of the handles as I could. The only thing that I couldn't get immediately was the email address, just like flanzella at gmail.com wasn't a thing. Uh, but everything else was so I knew that it was safe to use. The first thing I did really was this step and it definitely paid off and I would highly recommend doing it for other people as well. The next thing that I didn't do, which I should have done, is find a mentor. Prior to starting, I had never met a single person who was a full-time artist. I didn't know it was possible. I just knew that they were out there and I wish I had been lucky enough to know even just a single person that could have gotten me in contact with some other people. Being an entrepreneur is very lonely at times and it's great to have someone who knows what's up. Before starting, I had never shipped anything in my life, and now I'm shipping a ton of things all the time. I didn't know how to approach galleries. These are all things that I could have learned just by having a single contact. This is someone who's maybe started a year ago and can give you advice on what to do in their first year. Although I've been working on this for three years, I might even have things that aren't relevant anymore, right? Just on my path, just because of the time difference. Technology is evolving so quickly, and someone who made it 20 years ago, has never used social media as a beginner artist, right? So these are things that you need to look for when you're looking for a mentor. And that leads me to my next advice is either sign up for markets or being in galleries or any sort of local events where you can meet other artists. Go to those as soon as you can. Even if it's just like an art in the park day or something, if you have a booth, you're gonna be able to talk to the artist next to you all day and this has been super useful. I'll ask them what other events they're doing, if they know anyone that's similar to me, maybe they know someone lower down. You need to be going out and talking and putting yourself out there and that's just one way to self-promote and find out what's going on in your area. But I think if I had just attended events and talked to people, that could have been okay too. Especially in the early stages if you're not ready to show your art yet, that's a great way to just get involved in the community, build your network, and then when you launch, you'll have people behind you already. For me, I chose to do markets and I did learn a lot from other people around me. I'd also just recommend starting applying to open submissions. This could be for magazines or local events, anything really. It's great at the beginning to get as much exposure as you can, especially when you're starting with a count of zero followers, for example. This way you can get your social media posted in different places, get exposure, and then you'll be able to tell your followers that you were published in a magazine and that's pretty cool. I'd also recommend starting earlier with cross promotions. This is definitely something I didn't do right away and I wish I had. Find other accounts that are similar to yours. Maybe they have a couple more hundred followers than you, but not too much, just kind of similar in size. And ask if they want to do a collaboration or some sort of cross promotion, giveaways, etc. If they have similar looks and feel, you'll be able to get them as followers as well, which is super important. On Instagram too, I would go through pages of collage artists and follow the people that were on those pages, other collage artists and such, and I was able to build up quite a big following from that. Also, when it comes to social media, make sure that you only pick like two to three platforms that you can start with. Keep it consistent and pick the ones that you can post on regularly. The next thing I would recommend is learning who your audience is. After you've gone to a couple events, who's showing up, who's looking at your art, who is interested in purchasing? Find out what type of demographic that is and find events that these people would attend. Where do these people hang out? You have to go there because likely if a lot of them already like your work, all of the rest will too. You'll basically have a foolproof way of growing your audience very quickly with these people. Next, if you decide to start a website right away, make sure that you're also starting an email list right away. I've relied heavily on my email list over the years and I know I've heard a ton of artists say the same thing, that that is how they get a lot of their sales. So the earlier you can start that, the better. And my last point is that remember when you're starting a business, you're basically having a child. This is a metaphor that I hear a lot from a lot of different people. I have been spending all of my extra time on it and that is just life now. But I really love learning and innovating and all those sorts of things. So if those are things that you like to do, then you'll probably enjoy running a business. If you don't, there's definitely ways that you can still run a business, but there's definitely different strategies that you're going to have to take and different sacrifices that you're probably gonna to have to do. You just need to be extremely consistent and it's a constant thing in your life now. 
So make sure that you're carving out time for it. I'm gonna emphasize that again, because you can't just assume that you're not gonna put in the work and that things are gonna happen. Also remember that if you don't like social media, there's definitely ways to go about doing a business that doesn't involve those things. Remember, no business is the same. These are just my tips and things that I've reflected on over the years. And I'm sure that you could come up with a hundred other things I could talk about. If this seems scary to you, it definitely is. It's a big jump, but I know that if it's something you've wanted to do for a long time, just get to it. We also need to remember that it's okay to just have art as a hobby. If you know yourself and you know you just love art, keep keeping it as a hobby and that's amazing and it can be just for you. I definitely have to share all my art with the world now that I've decided to encounter on this journey. So decide what you wanna do. I see value on both sides, so just do whatever feels right for you. And you can always start and stop it if you need to. And hopefully the thing you take away from this is that in the first year, this is your tasting palette. I call this the tasting menu. Try everything, have little bites, and you're gonna see what is working and what is not, and then you'll be able to plan for the next year after it. Every single person's journey is going to look a lot different than the next person's. You could add yourself on TikTok and post two videos and go viral and never have to look back. Or you could have to try a ton of different things like myself. The most important thing is just to give it a try and be proud of yourself for doing that. You're gonna learn a lot really quickly. There's just so much that you cannot plan for and that's okay. That's what the journey of business is. This has been my rant. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, leave them below. I know that I've talked about a lot of things and there's probably a hundred other things that I could definitely mention here. I could turn this into a mini series and do a part two where I answer all your questions. So let me know down in the comments and thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll talk to you next week.